Gideon is in the process of gathering wheat, hiding it really under the wine press to keep the Midianites from knowing what he's doing. And while he is in the midst of this act, the angel of the Lord comes upon him and says, God is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, now wait a minute. If God is not only with me, but if God is with us as a nation, then why is all this trouble going on? Why are we in the shape we're in if God is with us? I want to briefly say to you today, the Lord is with you in spite of your present circumstance. Can you tell somebody that the Lord is with you in spite of your present circumstance? does the enemy try to make us doubt the presence of God the purpose of God in our life hallelujah because of the things that we are going through I've said it many times to you that the key word is the word through you're going through that means you're not going to get stuck in it. That God's going to bring you to the other side of it. And while you're going through, no matter what the enemy says, you've got to know that God is with you despite your present circumstance. We've got people that are going through. I mentioned two funerals yesterday. People that are going through grief. And if you don't watch it, the enemy will try to get you stuck in grief. I mean, person can be, I've heard some people, my God, I've seen them come to church and look like every time they're just so tearful and, and they're just all out of it. And I remember not too long ago, somebody said, well, you know, I lost this person in my family. And I'm thinking it happened that last week. When did it happen? Well, well that was back in, in 1985. I mean, something happened 10 years ago. And the enemy still had them cast down in the valley of sorrow. The enemy will use anything to try to take your focus off of what God is trying to do in your life. He'll use your present financial circumstance. And because you are having some financial difficulties now, the enemy will make you stop tithing, stop giving, telling you now God has let you down, so you're going to have to try some alternative methods. And so you get hooked on, I'm going to win the lottery. Uh, I'm going down uh, the road and I'm going to uh, try out this slot machine. Uh, I'm going to try my hand at cards or uh, the roulette wheel. I'm going to try something else. But I want you to know that God may allow you to have extenuating financial circumstances, but it does not mean he has abandoned you. You got to be aware of that doctrine that teach that if everything is not 100% right in your life, that if you're sick, uh, if you're broke, uh, if you're having trouble, that it's because your life is not lined up with the scripture. Listen, the Lord tells me that many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're righteous, but you're still going to be afflicted. The Bible is full of so many examples. Here was a man by the name of Job that God testified on his behalf. Told the devil to his face that he's holy. He's upright. 
He fears God. He eschewed evil. And yet the enemy moved God to the extent that God stepped back and let the devil go to work on everything Job had. His cattle, his servants, his wealth. Ten children died in one day. And then his wife didn't understand what was going on. Told him, if I were you, I'd curse that God and die. And the man was smitten from the sole of his feet with soul boils. Started at his feet and went up to his head. And when you get through reading the scripture, it talks about how offensive his breath was. And how that his flesh began to decay on his bones. And seven friends, three friends rather, came to see him. And if ever a person needed an encouraging word, Job needed it. But three friends sat down with him seven days and didn't say a word. And when they opened their mouth, they said the wrong thing. Instead of trying to comfort him, they stopped telling him why he was in the shape he's in. You've been misleading us. You're not really living for God like you said. And the only way that God brought Job out of what Job was in here is a man that has lost everything, sick, on his deathbed, and his friends didn't know God, and he realized they were worse off than he. And in the last chapter of the book, chapter 42, verse 10, it says the Lord turned captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. He was in bad shape, but he stopped praying for them. And when he prayed for them, God turned his life around. Hallelujah. Sometimes God lets you go through some things in order to let you know that life does not consist in the abundance of things that you possess. And you got to sometimes get your mind off self. And while you're praying for somebody else, God will come and see about you. But the book of Judges deals with the third phrase, third phase, shall I say, of Israel's redemption. I've often said it to you that it was Moses that God used to bring them out of Egypt. But then it was Joshua whom he used to carry them into the promised land. But once in the promised land, there were enemies to be driven out. And you've got to never forget that there are enemies in the promised land. You are in the promised land. But yet there are enemies that would separate you from your blessing. And all those enemies are not called Midianites and Jebusites and Canaanites and Perizzites and Hittites and Philistines. But your enemies are called discouragement. Your enemies are called fear. Your enemies are called unbelief. And these enemies will stop you right in the promised land from possessing your possession. They destroyed everything they planted. And this is why when the angel of the Lord finds Gideon, Gideon is now trying to make sure the Midianites don't get that hard earned wheat. And here he is trying to hide it under the wine press. Got to, got to get it out of sight before the Midianites come. And the angel of the Lord saw him in this cowardly act and says hey the Lord is with thee you are a mighty man of valor the Lord is with thee. if the Lord is here why are we into this mess <laughs> our fathers talked about a miracle working God and where are the miracles I haven't seen no miracle happening lately but I want you to know that God works the miracle at the precise moment when you need it most. <laughs> Peter sleeping between two soldiers. And it wait, waited, God waited till the night that he was going to be killed. Lord had some other nights he could have done it, but he said, I'm going to wait till the nick of time. And all these stories you see on television where the deliverer come right in the nick of time. That's rarely true. That's mythical. But God has a way of coming right in the nick of time. That night Peter was asleep between two soldiers getting ready to be executed. 
And the same night was when the angel of the Lord came in, smote him in the side, said, get up. And when he got up, the chains fell off. And he walked on up to the gate that separated the prison from the outside world. And it opened of his own accord. God delivered him and Peter was in a daze. He said, well, I want you to know that God is going to deliver Israel from the Midianites. But you are the one that he's going to use. And look at the way God did that thing. Here's a man still doubting. Well, am I really talking to an angel? And so the angel told him what to do. To dress a kid. Put it on the rock. And the angel caused the rock to catch fire and consume the sacrifice. He realized, oh my God, I really am talking to an angel of God. And he got scared for his life. But the angel said, don't, don't worry, you're not going to die. When God's got to work for you, don't worry, you're not going to die. Anybody in here know God still got some unfinished work for you? How many times have I told you, you can't die until God does what he said he's going to do? So for a moment, Gideon gets bold, gets him a little raiding party and goes and tears down the altar of the idol God Baal. Then the enemy gets all upset with him and said, all right, we're going to kill everybody in town if you don't give us this fella, Gideon. And Gideon made a cry for all of the men of Israel and he called for three or four tribes. And they came together, 32,000. And when the 32,000 got there, God said, I can't deliver you with all these folk. You got too many. See, we get comfort in how many folk are with us. Honey, are you with me or against me? Yeah, that's, that's the gang concept. Every gang feels confident when he feels I got more folk in my gang. Then you got in your game. But God said that if I deliver Israel from the Midianites with all this host you got. Years to come, centuries to come. You'll be talking about how Israel got up, rose up and delivered herself. But I want you to know that the only way I can get glory. It's got to be done in such way. Where that you'll know you didn't do it with your numbers. And God cut down the number from 32,000. First, he told all the cowards to go home. Thank God that we don't know who God's real folk are. The foundation of God standeth sure having this seal, that the Lord knows them that are his. And no way for me to look around this vast congregation and tell Who's living right? Who's saved? Who's not saved? Who's on the Lord's side? Because everybody come in dressed up. I told y'all last Sunday we have about 85% uh, shouters. About 20 to 25% tithers. And, and, and there's no way for me to know who. Uh, really the people of God but he knows yeah. Yeah. Gideon said I want all the cowards to go home you that just came you in the number but you know you your heart will grow faint 10,000 men got up and left left him with 22,000 God said you still got too many uh, so I'm going to have to hand pick them Take them down by the brook of water. Let me see how they drink water. Said, now those that you see that lapse water, even like a dog, that's still looking but reaching down and getting a drink. Uh, those that you see falling all off in the water, don't, you can't use them. <laughs> you get in trouble, they'll be lost drinking and eating and not watching for the enemy so those that you see that lap it's like a dog you, you go over and 
and, and uh, put your hand on those and separate them. God said, I'm going to do it, and all I need is just a small handful. I want you to know that when God gets ready to do his thing in your life, you don't have to worry about who's not with you. Never seen so many folk whining and crying about who's turned on me and who did this and who did that and who did the other. You just don't know sometimes God is trying to separate. He's trying to separate until he gets a sincere number. You read the story of the healing of Jairus' daughter. When Jesus got to that house, mourners were all down the street. And he said, oh, the girl's not dead. Just sleep. And they laughed him to scorn. They stopped crying on cue. And Jesus didn't even take everybody that he had with him in the house. He left nine of his disciples outside. Didn't take nobody in but Peter, James, and John. And then he took Jairus and Jairus' wife and he himself and walked into the girl's bedroom and there she was lying there dead. She made number seven. The Lord couldn't work his miracle until he put the doubters on the outside. Sometimes what God want to do in your life, he would have done it long time ago if he had disconnected you from some of the folk you hang with. Every time he got ready to bless you, you went and got your best friend. And sometimes your best friend is your worst enemy. And then a whole lot of time you can't pray by yourself. You got to have your prayer partner. And sometimes instead of P-R-A-Y-I-N-G for you, they're P-R-E-Y-I-N-G on you. Instead of praying for you, they praying. You don't know a lot of time God has to strip everything and everybody away from you. And when he gets through stripping everybody away from you, he said, I brought you here where I could talk to you and let you know that the thing you're going through doesn't mean that I don't love you. But I only had to do that to get you to that personal relationship. God said, I don't want it to be nobody between me and you. Your present circumstance doesn't mean that I don't love you. Here are the disciples of the Lord. Sit down now. I'm almost finished. Disciples of the Lord in the ninth chapter of John. They come up on a man that was born blind. And his disciples had some foolish ideas like many of us. Master, who did sin? This man is born blind. Did he sin or did his parents? Causing him to be born blind. Now, anybody ought to know nobody could sin before they were born. So automatically the man didn't sin. But Jesus said neither his parents. He's not in the shape that he's in because of sin. But that the works of God would be manifested in him. In other words, Jesus said the only reason I let this man be born blind was so that I could open his eyes. And a lot of times the only reason God is suffering you to be in what you are in is so that he can have glory when he brings you out. I, I got to close. But that song that Andre Crouch wrote several years ago, many times I find myself singing it. Riding down the street in Macabre, I hear myself saying, and now I thank God. For the mountains. And I thank him for the valleys. And I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I would not know that God could solve them. And I wouldn't know what faith in God to do. But through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all. I've learned to depend upon his word. And all I want to tell you today is 
Don't let what you're going through shake you. Don't let what you're going through make you feel like God doesn't love you. Because I hear him say, Lord, I am with you. When you go through the waters, I won't let the rivers overflow you. When you go through the fire, I won't let the hair of your head be singed. And that's why David decided I'm not going to let my circumstances get me upset. Because I know the Lord, he is my shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley. Is anybody in here going through the valley? Shadows of death are everywhere. But I'll fear no evil because I know I'm not walking by myself. I may have trouble. I may be in the fiery furnace. But Jesus is in the furnace with me. Tell somebody whatever you're going through. Jesus still loves you. God is still with you. And everything is all.